Welcome to Bloom at the Yoga Garden. So thank you so much for joining me for this class. So today we're going to be thinking about self-acceptance and along with that really self-love. Because we are all very good at giving love to other people but we're not so good about giving love to ourselves. So we're going to begin by lying back and down in Shavasana. So get yourself nice and comfortable. Imagine you're taking the crown of your head up towards the end of the mat. Nice long back neck, shoulders relaxed. Imagine you're taking your shoulder blades down towards your hips. The upper arms rotated, so allow the backs of the hands to be in the floor or just have your hands down by the sides if that's more comfortable. The heel of the right foot at the right edge of the mat, the heel of the left foot at the left edge of the mat. And just take a nice, long, slow, deep inhale, in through the nose, and a nice, soft, whispery exhale, out through the nose. And just literally allow yourself to arrive on your mat. So you've set aside this time for your yoga practice, and by doing so, you're taking responsibility for your own physical, mental, and emotional well-being. So just take a few more nice, long, slow, satisfying breaths. Savor your breath. Enjoy your breath. We don't often take time to enjoy our breath to, or to savor it. So today we want to begin to accept where we are, where we are in our lives, where we are in our yoga practice. And remember, no one is perfect. You're not perfect, I'm not perfect, none of us is perfect. But that's what makes us all so lovely and unique. We are perfect in our imperfection, perfectly imperfect and if we could just remember that little mantra I think we would all be a lot happier we wouldn't be striving to be better at this or striving to be thinner or striving to be healthier or striving whatever accept where we are and know that we are on the right track enjoy the journey don't be wishing to get to the end of it Enjoy where you are, enjoy your journey. Use your yoga practice to explore all the parts of yourselves, all the stories you tell yourself. When you realize that you're just perfect the way you are, you'll begin to release yourself from all those negative stories that you've been telling yourself and begin to accept yourself as you are. And remember, as I've said so often, your body remembers everything that your mind tells it. So what we're thinking, what we're telling ourselves is so, so important. We want to be giving ourselves the right messages, the right positive messages, those uplifting messages that make us feel good. So just take a minute or two and tell yourself, I am perfect just the way I am. I am enjoying the journey. So we're just going to do a little bit of breathing and we're going to do the coherent breath. So that's in for a count of six and out for a count of six. So this is the breath that's thought to um, engage the parasympathetic nervous system, which is, helps to tone the vagus nerve, which is the one that comes the whole way down from the base of the spine, wanders its way down the body towards the tummy and all these organs. And 
is responsible for giving us the butterflies in our tummy and the excitement that we feel and that gut feeling, that gut reaction. So the parasympathetic nervous system is the rest, relax, restore, renew systems of our body. So when we are in the parasympathetic nervous system, rather than the sympathetic nervous system, we are in the rest, restore, relax, renew element. And our organs, our organs of elimination work better, our organs of digestion work better, our heart rate is lowered, our pulse rate slows down, and we get lots more oxygen up into our brain, so we make better decisions. And of course, we feel more relaxed. So we're going to just do five rounds of the coherent breath, which will take one minute. And of course, you take a breath anytime you need to. If it's too long for you to hold for six, to breathe in for six and breathe out for six, you take a breath whenever you need to. You should never feel tension when you're doing any of these breathing exercises. So try and keep everything nice and relaxed. So we'll just take a nice breath here now, put together. Exhale completely. And then inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Last one, inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then just come back to your natural breath. You may notice that it has slowed down. And again, savor your breath, enjoy your breath. <coughs> Excuse me. And just accept where you are now. So we spent a few minutes settling the physical body, calming the mind. Now we are ready to begin the physical aspect of our yoga practice. So as always, listen to your own body. Don't do anything that you know doesn't suit your body. Be kind to yourself. And take a rest, use a prop, whatever seems right for you, you do it. I don't know how you're feeling today. So we'll just bring our knees in towards our chest for we rock from side to side. And as your knees go to the right, maybe you'll turn your head to the left. And as your knees go left, turn your head to the right. So one more of those. And then straighten your left leg out along the floor. Bring your right knee in nice and close. Try not to let your shoulders creep up as you do this. So bring your right hand to the front of the right knee, left hand onto the left thigh. And we're just going to do some nice rotations with that right hip. So feel that you're getting into all the little areas of the right hip. So there'll probably be bits that feel a bit creaky or a bit tight change direction and those are the bits that you really want to work into so slowly the slower you do it the more you're going to get out of it so now we'll swap sides so left leg in give it a squeeze and then the same thing again left hand to the front with the fingers pointing down <clears throat> Right hand onto the right thigh and nice circles with the left hip. So keep working into the heel of the right foot and leg. 
Keep it strong, change direction. And again, this side could feel completely different. And then we're going to plant both feet on the floor. <clears throat> and we're coming back to the right side again. Bring your right knee in. And this time we're going to see if we can encourage it down towards the right shoulder. So you're sort of trying to hug your right thigh <clears throat> down to the sides of the right ribs. Right knee heading towards the right shoulder. And then reach down with your left hand and hold on to your shin, your ankle, your heel, wherever you can reach and begin to bring the right foot up towards the ceiling. So you want the right knee and the ankle to be more or less in line and you're encouraging the right knee down to the outside of the right elbow or the right shoulder. So you can keep this left leg bent or if you want to work a wee bit harder you can straighten it out so it'll maybe not go to the floor, so you can let it hover. But you don't need to do that at all. You can keep that leg bent. So you're pressing into, you're pressing the sole of the right foot into the hand and the hand into the foot. So you're just encouraging a little bit of movement there in the hip. One more breath here. And then gently release your right foot and we'll swap sides. So plant the right foot in the floor to begin with and bring the left leg in. Take your left hand down the inside, hold on to the shin, the ankle, maybe the heel, whatever you can get. Of course use um, a scarf or a belt as well if you have it handy. And knee again, heel and knee in line foot up towards the ceiling and encouraging the left knee down towards the outside of the left shoulder. And again, see how it feels and maybe begin to straighten the right leg along the floor, but you don't need to do this bit. So really what we want is a nice line between the heel and the ankle, the heel and the ankle, the heel and the knee would probably work a lot better. So you're gently pressing, it can be quite strong, this, so say gently pressing, you're pressing your hand into your foot and your foot into your hand. One more breath here. And then gently lower that foot down and place it on the floor, bring the other foot in. So we're going to have our knees and feet hip width apart and we're going to do Setu Banda. So ideally your heels will be where you can just graze the heels with the middle finger. And if you have any back issues, take your feet slightly further away and don't come up so high either. So tuck your shoulders in, press your feet into the floor, press into your hands. And well, let's just do a few wee um, hip rotations to begin with. So you're just lifting the points of the hips up towards the ceiling and then lower them down again. So. Just say hip rotations, hip flexions. And then press strongly into both feet and begin to lift your hips up towards the ceiling. So watch that your thighs don't roll in or roll out. So keep pressing into both feet and exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. So you're aiming your Breastbone up towards your chin, your chin up towards the ceiling. And exhale, lower down. One more. Tuck your shoulders in, press into your feet, lift up. Go for your full expression this time. Sternum coming up towards the chin, chin up towards the ceiling. So. You shouldn't have any issue breathing here. Big inhale, maybe lift up another little bit. Inhale and exhale. Try and soften into it, use your breath. And then another inhale, and this time as you exhale, unroll really, really slowly. 
keep those knees nice and steady and bring yourself all the way down onto mat. So from here, we're just going to roll over onto the right side, or if you want to, you can rock and roll and bring yourself up and meet me in tabletop. So your knees are below your hips, your hip, knees and feet hip width apart. You're pressing into the base of the index and finger and thumb, and your wrists are below your shoulders. So press the floor away, strong hands and arms, no sort of collapsing in here. So we're going to do um, cat cows with a circle, if that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense once we start. So we're going to take a big inhale and as we do, we're going to drop our tummy down towards the floor, bottom up towards the ceiling, bring your heart center through. And then as you exhale, begin to round your shoulders, tuck your chin under and take yourself over to the right. And then come around your circle, inhale, back into your cow pose. Exhale, tuck your tail round your shoulders, press the floor away, round to the left. And as you inhale back to centre, into your cow pose. So we'll go the other way this time. Exhale, tuck your tail, press the floor away, chin towards your chest, round to the left. Back to centre, into your cow pose. Exhale. Chin to chest, press the floor away, round your shoulders, round to the right. And you know, it doesn't really matter um, what way you go in this, because all we're trying to do, and then bring yourself back to centre, all we're trying to do is just to get as much movement as we can into the spine, and just warming up all those muscles along the back and the sides of the body. Okay, so now we're going to reach back with the right, the toes of the right foot and leg. And just press into the heel very gently to start off with. And then we're going to take the right foot out, oops, out to the right. And then bring it back round and right across. And look and admire your left toes. Back to centre, and now we're going to lift the right leg up at hip level, pressing the floor away with the right hand. Reach forward with the left hand and arm, or keep this left hand on the floor. And navel back towards your spine. This is really great tummy toner. So reaching forward and reaching back. That's all we're going to do, pressing into the right hand and arm. Strong right hand and arm. Breathe. You can do this. You're doing really well. This is strong. Try not to collapse into the right arm. Try not to let it have a wee rest. One more breath. And then gently bring back your knee and hand down. So now we're going to the other side. Reach back with the left foot and leg. Press into the heel of the left foot and leg and then reach it round to the left, and then draw it right round to oops, the right, and turn and look. And try not to have stuff sitting about the way I have, so that you can't really do it. And then bring yourself back to centre, and we're going to lift the left foot up, left leg up at hip level, pressing the floor away, two strong arms, hips nice and level, and then reach forward with the right hand and arm if you want to. So navel back towards your spine, really engage the muscles along the front body and it makes it so much easier. So reaching into the fingertips, pressing into the left heel and breathe and smile. Tell yourself, I'm strong, I can do this. Feel your tummy being toned. One more big inhale and exhale. Bring your hand down and your knee in. And then from here, we're just going to step through with the right foot and leg. 
So get your balance and then press into the top of the back foot and the front foot and bring your arms up into low lunge. Reaching up and sitting down. Inhale up and exhale down. So now we're going to tuck the toes of the back foot under and we're just going to lift the back knee off the floor the tiniest little bit, no distance at all. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Well done. Inhale up, exhale down. And then from here, we're going to fold forward, frame the front foot and step back into your tabletop position. So other side, left foot forward. So ha have it far enough forward so that you're feeling a little bit of a stretch. So it's a, a low lunge, but it's a decent lunge too. Get your balance press in the top of the back foot. Bring your arms up. Look up between your hands if you want to. Shoulders away from your ears. Lifting up. Big inhale, exhale. Maybe lunge a little bit more, but we're not leaning forward, we'll say that. Inhale up. And exhale, relax. Tuck the toes of the back foot under. And when you're ready, just a little lift. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Frame the front foot with your hands, toes away. Step back into high kneeling and turn yourself around so you're facing the long edge of your mat. And we're going to do paragas in the gate pose. So it's quite useful to have your knees fairly close to the front edge of the mat. So if you have um, a blanket or anything you use for padding, please do so, or you can fold the edge of your, fold your mat up. This mat's quite thick, doesn't like being folded up. So you can fold your mat over, or say put a blanket or anything at all under that left knee if you want to. And then we're going to step the right foot out to the side. So this is where if you've got you're quite close to the edge of your mat. You get a nice line here. You can see that the heel and the knee are in line. So we're using the right hand to keep that knee in the right place at the minute. Left hand onto your hip. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of options. So if you think, oh, I've done this so often, it's easy. Then you can straighten your right leg out with your toes pointing forward like this, and you still keep your hand down the inside here. Or you can turn your toes so they're pointing away from you. So this is the strongest version. So lift the kneecaps and really press into that foot if you can. I'm going to stay here. So you know where you are and you just stay where it feels right for you. And then we're going to rotate the left hand out to the side Draw that energy round and allow your right hand to slide down the inside of the right leg. And then if you want to, you can turn your head and look under the left arm. And breathe. Inhale, reach into the fingertips. Exhale, maybe go a little lower. But listen, don't, don't collapse. So we could all go like this. That's not what we're looking for. We want to keep length on this side of the body. So remember the feeling of length now you have on the left side of the body. And we're going to bring the left hand down onto the left hip. Keep the right foot exactly where it is. Bring the right hand up. And remember, keep length on the left side of the body and fold over to the left. And maybe you think I can reach the floor, but only if you can do it without collapsing. Hand and hip is perfect. Or you could use a brick if you have it handy. Reach into the right fingertips. Watch your right knee. It hasn't gone walk about. Mine has. I actually want the knee and the ankle in line. Press into the right foot. Big inhale. And exhale. Bring yourself back to centre. Bring the right knee down and swap over your support if you need it or your padding. And we'll do the other side. So same thing again, exactly. Ankle, heel and knee in line. 
and the same options if you want to take them. I'm staying here. Left hand down the inside of the left leg. Use it to keep this leg in line because it will want to roll in once you start to move. Rotate the right hand, bring it up, draw up through that air. Where you are is just perfect, so don't be going further than you need to. If you're here, that's fine. And begin to allow your left hand to slide down the inside of that leg, reaching into the fingertips, exhaling, sitting a little bit, sinking a little bit lower. And you can turn your head and look under your right arm if you want to. Inhale and exhale. One more breath here. And then bring yourself back up again, press into your foot, right hand onto your hip. Keep the left leg exactly where it is. I try not to let mine move this time. Left hand comes up. Remember that length in the right side of the body we had. Press into the left foot, wherever it is, and hinge over to the right. And breathe and smile. One more breath and gently bring yourself back. Bring that knee in and then turn yourself back around. Get rid of your padding. Bring yourself back round to centre. Come into tabletop, press into your hands. So pressing into the base of the index finger and thumb, index fingers facing forward, fingers well spread. Tuck your toes under and come up into downward facing dog. So press the floor away, lift your sit bones up and then walk your dog. So don't worry about straightening your legs at all. You don't have to get your legs straight. Sit bones lifting up, navel back towards your spine and if you want to, once you've walked your dog, you can keep just focus on bringing your hips up or your sit bones up towards the ceiling and maybe begin to straighten your legs and take your heels back and down. And let your head go. And this is such a lovely posture, you know, once you've got it mastered and you've got the strength and the stamina, it feels so good. It's an inversion and you're getting lots of oxygen and into your head. Oh, so good. It is really one of my favourite postures now. And I'm telling you, I used to think it never ever would be. So one more breath here. And then we're going to look forward and step through with the right foot. So you can keep the left knee lifted or you can place it on the floor. Right knee and ankle in line. And you want to reach forward with the right hand and arm and swing it round. Lovely circles, windmilling that right hand and arm. And allow your body to turn with it. Change direction. And then bring your right hand down to the inside of the right foot. Bring the left knee to the floor, toes away. Heel toe your right foot out to the edge of your mat. So maybe the toes even might come off the mat. You can come on to the baby toe side of the right foot if you want to. And we're trying to encourage that right hip to fall away. So maybe come up to the top of the right hip and actually physically encourage it to rotate out. So we're bringing our heart center through into a version of lizard pose. So see how it feels for you here. If you're already feeling a good stretch, you're going to stay here. But maybe if you have um, a bolster or a cushion handy or a block, you'll come down onto your elbows. Or maybe you'll come down your elbows on the floor. And then you can clasp your hands or you can keep your hands out in front. But wherever you are, now I just... Let your head go. I'm just check my back lower leg still straight. Let your head go. And breathe. 
So wherever you're feeling it, more than likely at the top of the right leg, the hip flexor, breathe into that area. Inhale. And exhale. So two more breaths here. And then if you're on your elbows, come onto your hands, walk yourself back, bring the right foot in slightly, tuck the toes of the back foot under and bring yourself up into downward facing dog and walk your dog briefly and then we're going to do the other side. So. Get yourself nice and comfortable and nice and comfortable. <laughs> Just have a wee stretch out here. And then look forward and step through with the left foot and leg. And keep the right knee off the floor or plant it on the floor, whatever you feel is right for you. And then swing your left arm forward. Nice windmill circles again. And follow your hands. So allow your body to move, change direction, and just notice how this side feels different, it does for me, and then bring your left hand to the inside of the left foot, right knee to the floor, and heel to the left foot, maybe with the toes off the mat, maybe not. And again, come on to the baby toe side of that left foot if you want to. Maybe bring your left hand or your left thumb to the top of the left thigh and allow it to rotate out. And if you're feeling good stretch here, this is where you'll stay. Bring your heart centre through, look forward. And as soon as you bring your heart centre through, it increases the stretch there, whether you bring your elbows down or not. And again, so this side could be different. Check your lower back foot. Mine likes to go walk about today for some reason. And then maybe bring yourself down onto your cushion, onto a block, whatever, and then let your head go. So you could clasp your hands here if you want to. So we're not trying not to round our spine. We're trying to keep fairly flat back here. And breathe into wherever you're feeling it. Two more breaths here. And then if you're on your elbows, walk yourself back onto your hands. Tuck the toes of the back foot under and bring yourself back into downward facing dog. And just walk your dog ever so briefly. And then come into your static dog. And from here we're just going to flip onto the baby toe side of the right foot and the big toe side of the left foot. Walk your right hand maybe towards the centre a little bit and then stay here with your, you can bring this left foot as far forward as you want to so you can keep it just in front or you know where you are in your practice, maybe you'll bring it up on top. Bring your left hand onto your hip so we're looking for a nice open front body. And then maybe release your left hand up towards the ceiling. So you want your head and neck in line with your spine. Keep pressing into the heels, particularly the heel of the right foot and leg, and lift your hips up. Lovely. One more breath here. So if you're here, press into your left foot. And then bring your left hand down. Bring your toes back to centre or your feet back to centre and bring yourself back into downward facing dog. 
and we're just going to do the other side. So same thing again. Flip onto the baby toe side of the left foot this time, big toe side of the right foot. Move your left hand in maybe a little bit, lift your hips up, right hand onto your hip. So keep that right foot as far forward as you need to. Keep pressing into the heel of the left foot, shoulders rolling back, lovely open front body, head and neck in line with your spine. Breathe, smile, strong left arm, lift your hips. One more breath and bring your hand down. Bring yourself back into down dog. Knees to the floor. Bring your knees out the full width of your mat. Big toes to touch. And bring yourself down. Maybe even bring your hands down either side of your feet. And do a few wee rotations with your wrists. And say, well done wrists. Well done strong arms. So inhale into the back body. Exhale and soften into the front body. And feel your stretching out along the back body. One more breath here. And then bring your hands forward. Tuck your toes under. And just walk your hands feet rather towards your hands, whatever way you want to. Let your head go and bring yourself down into Uttanasana one. Knees bent as deeply as you need to. Use this wee shelf to rest your chest on, the shelf with your thighs. Crown of your head to the floor, maybe hold on to your elbows. Upper body is like a rag doll, really soft and loose, letting go. Inhale and exhale. Then your next inhale, come into your flat back hands, to your shins, your thighs, so you're not locking your knees, shoulders are rolling back and down. Heart centre coming through, and exhale, fold a little deeper. Inhale, into your flat back, bring your heart centre through, and exhale, fold a little deeper. One more breath here, and then inhale, press into your feet, and bring yourself the whole way up. Look up between your hands, and draw all that lovely energy down towards your heart center. Inhale, and exhale, shoulders rolling back and down, pressing into all four corners of your feet. And then bring yourself to face the long edge of your mat again. And we've already done this today, except we did it lying down the floor. So we're going to reach forward this time with the right foot and leg and we're going to swing it round to the right and then we're going to take it the whole way round to the left. Press into the left foot and bring yourself back up without hopefully falling over. So we'll do one more on that side. So left, right foot forward, out to the side, bring it round. So lift it off the floor this time if you can and out to the side, and then press into your left foot, and bring yourself back again. 
go to the other side. So take the weight onto the right foot and leg this time, left foot out in front, round to the side, reach it out to the back, admire your left toes, and then bring it back, whoops, to center. Don't worry if you fall over. <laughs> the important thing is you go again. Out, round to the left, round to the right, admire your toes, press into your right foot, and bring it back. So balancing requires focus and concentration. And honestly, when you focus and concentrate on it, it makes it so much easier and it does seem to work better for some reason. Okay, so we're going to do Trikonasana and then Ardha Chandrasana. So you can walk or jump your feet three, three and a half feet apart. And actually, if you have a brick handy, keep it somewhere quite close. So you actually want it to the baby toe side of your right foot. So all of the right foot and leg is turned completely, the left foot in slightly, and the torso, try and encourage it to face the long edge of your mat. So we're going to take a big inhale, reach up with the right hand and arm. So try and keep the left hip going back, feel the rotation of this right leg, and lean over until, or well, until, as if you're trying to place the right ribs onto the right thigh. So when you've gone as far as you can, drop your left hand down, feel again that you're opening across the front of the body, and this time we're going to swig our arm round and maybe take a bind with the top, at the top of that left thigh, or just have your left hand round your waist, it doesn't matter, round your lower back. So feel you have a lovely open front body and you can look up at the ceiling if you have no neck issues. One more breath and then we're going to bend the right knee, reach down, make contact with your brick if you have it and you want your brick about a foot in front of your right foot at the baby toe side. Begin to lean into the front leg and onto your brick and allow your right, sorry, left leg to drift up. Now, if the bind knocks your balance off, just let go or bring your hand to wherever feels okay for you. But again, we're trying to get a nice open front body, trying to stack the hips, head and neck in a nice line with the spine strong right leg. So keep a, a wee bent in the right leg if it's easier. Bend your right knee, step back nice and carefully and bring yourself into Virabhadrasana too. So right knee heading towards the middle of the right foot, pressing into the baby toe, toe side of the back foot, looking over your right arm. So warrior poses are strong poses. Reaching into the fingertips, Inhaling into the crown of your head, exhale, sit a little bit lower. One more breath here. Drop your hands down to your waist. Turn your toes so they're facing forward. And we're going to do the other side. So you might need to shorten your stance a wee bit. Your stance may have grown a little bit. So three, three and a half feet apart. Turn all of your left foot and leg completely. So again, feel the rotation on the left thigh this time, right foot in slightly, torso more or less facing the long edge of your mat, right hand onto your hip, reach up with your left hand and begin, oops, move your brick. Reach up with your left hand and feel as if you're folding over, trying to bring the left ribs onto the left thigh and then drop your hand down to wherever it comes, rotate the right shoulder and maybe swing your left arm round and take your bind at the top of the left thigh or just your left, bring your arm round to the left wrist. 
open up across the front of the body and look up towards the sky. So tuck the left hip under. Try and get that nice flatness. Flatness, that doesn't make sense, does it? But it doesn't matter where you are because wherever you are is just right for you at the minute. Just enjoy the posture. Breathe into it. So these are strong postures. You are just fine, perfect the way you are. I should have reminded you about that a wee bit sooner, but better late than never. So now we're going to bend the front leg. We want the brick again about a foot or so in front of the front leg. Begin to drift the right leg up. Try and keep that nice openness in the front of the body as you allow the right leg to come up. So trying to stack the hips, the shoulders and breathe. Head and neck in a nice line with your spine. Breathe and smile. You are doing a really good job. One more breath. Bend the left knee. Step back carefully into Virabhadrasana 1. Turn and look over your left fingertips. Left knee heading towards the middle of the foot. Pressing into the baby toe side of the back foot. One more big inhale here. And exhale, sit a little bit lower. Bring your hands down. Bring both toes, feet to face forward. Heel toe. Your feet in until they're about the width of the narrow side of your mat apart and then bring your hands to your heart center and bring yourself down into malasana take your elbows to the insides of your thighs hands to your heart center lift your heart center up sacrum going down towards the floor hands on the floor if your heels are off the floor but if you're comfortable, come here like this. Lift up, smile, feel that stretch in your hips. One more breath. And then gently bring your hands to the floor in front or to the back, wherever you need to, to lower yourself down onto your mat. And then bring the soles of your feet together in like an extended um, Baddha So you're trying to get a wee triangle here. So as if you've got a wee triangle here, your front feet. And take a big inhale, hold onto your feet, your ankles, wherever you can. Check you're on your sit bones and just begin to fold forward. So just to wherever you go and just drop your head down. Inhale and exhale. One more breath here. Walk your hands back up your legs gently. Bring your legs back in together. And now we're going to take our hands in at the backs of our thighs. And just roll back till you find that little spot where you're not going to fall over. And maybe lift one leg up. Maybe lift the other leg up. Maybe let go. Maybe be here and let go. That's fine. So you want to bring your chest towards your thighs or your thighs towards your chest. Don't lean back too far. Reach up if you can. Say how wonderful. One more big inhale. And gently bring your hands to the floor, whatever you need to do to lower yourself down onto your mat. Bring your knees into your chest. We rock from side to side. And then take your arms out at the crucifix or at the shoulder level rather. Squeeze your knees together and drop them down towards the right. Turn your head, look left. And feel that nice stretch down the left side of the body. So left shoulder resting on the floor, 
bring your feet up a bit if, it's, if you need to so that you can keep your left shoulder on the floor. One more breath here. And then inhale, bring your knees back to centre. Get yourself centred again. And then inhale, drop your knees down to the right as you exhale. Head looking over the right shoulder, right shoulder coming down onto the floor. And feel the stretch down the right side this time. And just be aware of any differences. And where you are is perfect. Tell yourself, I am perfect just the way I am. One more breath. Bring your knees back to centre. Bring your arms in. And maybe you might like to take your relaxation with your feet out through the width of the mat, knees knocking in. Or if you prefer, straighten your legs out along the floor and take your relaxation in Shavasana. So wherever you are, make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you're warm enough. Make any final adjustments you need to make so that you can sit nice and comfortably without moving, if possible, for the next few minutes. So arms are rotated, shoulders rolling away from your ears and shoulder blades moving down into the hip pockets. If you're in Shavasana, the heel of the right foot at the right edge of the mat, the heel of the left foot at the left edge of the mat. So take a nice long, slow, deep inhale and a nice, soft, whispery exhale in and out through the nostrils. Inhale, I breathe in this moment. Exhale, I breathe out everything that is not off this moment. Inhaling, I am here in my body, in the present. Exhaling, I let go of anything that is not of the present. Inhale, I breathe in spaciousness. Exhaling, I breathe out solidity, rigidity. Inhale, I breathe in possibility. Exhale, I breathe out expectation. Inhale, I breathe in the beginner's mind, the unknown. Exhale, I breathe out limitations, what I think I know. And just return to your natural breath. And just do a quick scan of your body and see if there's any way you can let go a tiny little bit more. And start at the toes, the tops of the feet, the soles, the heels, the ankles, the calves, the shins, the knees, the backs of the knees, the thighs, fronts of the thighs, the backs of the thighs. Allow your legs to be really heavy, releasing, letting go on the floor, completely supported by your mat. Come to the buttocks, an area where we can hold quite a bit of tension. See if you can let go a little bit. The points of the hips, the abdomen, all the internal organs resting down onto the back body. The front ribs, the back ribs, the backs of the shoulders, the collarbones the heart centre, all of your torso supported, releasing, relaxing down onto the mat, the tops of the shoulders, 
the upper arms, the elbows, the inner eye of the elbows, the lower arms, wrists, the backs of the hands, the palms of the hands, the fingertips curling in lightly towards each other. All of your legs, your torso, your arms and hands completely supported by the mat. No effort required by you at all. The sides of the neck, the chin, the jaw, the hinge of the jaw, soft, no clenching, the teeth, the tongue resting on the floor of the mouth, the cheekbones, all the little muscles around the eyes, the eyebrow centre, the third eye, the forehead, smooth unfurled, the back of the head, crown of the head, all of your body completely supported by the mat and by the earth beneath. Feel the connection that you have with the earth and let it go. No that you are just exactly where you are. Tell yourself, I am perfect just the way I am. Take a nice long, slow, deep inhale and a nice long, slow, whispery exhale and just let everything else go. So this is called letting go. To let go doesn't mean to stop caring. It means I can't do it for someone else. To let go is not to cut myself off. It's the realization that I can't control another. To let go is not to enable, but to allow learning from natural consequences. To let go is not to admit powerlessness, but that the outcome is not in my hands. To let go is not to try to change another. I can only change myself. To let go is not to care for, but to care about. To let go is not to fix, but to be supportive. To let go is not to judge, but to allow another to be a human being. To let go is not to be in the middle arranging all the outcomes, but to allow others to affect their own outcomes. To let go is not to be protective, it is to permit, it is to permit another to face reality. To let go is not to deny, but to accept. To let go is not to nag, scold or argue, but to search out my own shortcomings. To let go is not to adjust everything to my desires, but to take each day as it comes and cherish the moment. To let go is not to criticise and regulate everyone, but to be become, but to become what I dream I can be. To let go is not to regret the past, but to grow and live for the future. To let go is to fear less and love more. So your relaxation is almost complete. Begin to breathe more deeply. Wriggle your fingers. Wriggle your toes. Gently wake your body up again. And when you're ready, bring your hands together at your heart center. Rub them nice and briskly together. And when they're nice and warm, cup your hands and place your cupped hands over the closed eyes and gently blink your eyes open into the warmth of your hands, spread your fingers and let the light in nice and gently. Then gently release your hands. 
Bring your right knee into your chest, your left knee into your chest and begin to rock gently from side to side. And when you're ready, take the rock right over onto the right side of your body. Press into your left hand and gently bring yourself up into any comfortable seated position and meet me with your hands in a Jali Mudra. Take a nice big inhale and exhale, bow your head down towards your heart. So thank you so much for joining me for this practice. I really appreciate the fact that you keep tuning in and joining me for your yoga practice. So may friendships and fond memories fill your heart with enough love to share. And may your beauty shine and inspire others. Namaste. Namaste.